Hello world, Mr Gilly Micro here with another episode of the Gilly Micro podcast. Uh, we remain on tour in sunny honey, Hunstanton in Norfolk um, with uh, some, I say important, relatively important I suppose. I suppose kind of important to me. Well, minor, minor, sort of barely worth mentioning. <laughs> uh, but I believe uh, that our, our dear Gilly Micro has won at Academic Bingo. Uh, which is where you try and accumulate all the various academic titles possible and you complete it and you shout house and, and then you collect your prize. <laughs> which is actually yeah. probably nothing very much at all. So, Dr. Gurley, I'm sorry, I do apologise. <laughs> Professor Gurley Micro. I know, how weird is that? Uh, your, what is your news? Um, yes, yeah, so I found out this week that I have been awarded an honorary professorship at UCL. So I now get to be Professor Girly Micro, which is the weirdest thing to come out of my mouth. Um, things like this don't happen to people like me, frankly. Um, I don't think that kind of really normal people get to be professors. And mostly the response has been from my family and me either. From my father, who, by the way, if you see me walking around with a giant picture of myself and the prof on any piece of merchandise, it will be because my father has bought it for me and it's kind of sweet and cool. So, so you, we're all getting T-shirts, right? Yeah, with yeah. Your, with your face on. And he's also bought giant badges, people. Giant badges with me and yeah. the prof written across the top. I have never seen him so excited. But me and all our friendship circle, we're all going to get T-shirts <laughs> with your face on it. And we're all going to sit around you and, and sort of, and you're going to be hideously embarrassed. I mean, Great. yeah. It, I, to be honest, you can't see. I am incredibly red just even talking about it. Um, because, as I said, it was nothing that, um, you know, it, it honestly doesn't happen to people like me. I'm a very normal um, person. I'm, I say, you say normal, and I'm doing air quotes here. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't go to public school. I've never been the person that is like the smartest person in the room. And so I suppose for me, it's really about taking this moment to go, look, guys, if I can do it, any of you can just give it a go. Um, because, yeah, I mean, for some time in my career, people have jokingly occasionally referred to me as um, prof and I always responded that it was very sweet, but that was never going to happen. And yet, in January 2023, it kind of did. Um, it was not a straightforward process either. So, for quite a while... <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't straightforward in terms of... Obviously, there's a lot of boxes that you um, need to tick... But it also wasn't straightforward because for a while, the email that contained the information about whether after going through numerous committees and people it had been approved got lost in someone's inbox. So for about three months, two months, um, I have been what is known as a Schrodinger's professor. Um, Would you have dubbed yourself (laughs) as a Schrodinger's professor? Um, Because until someone could find said email and open it, no one knew whether I was a professor or not. I existed in both states simultaneously. Nothing to do with a a vial of radioactive poison that might release and kill you. (laughs) So what does it feel like to be the husband of a professor? Well, for a start, I'm glad there's no poison and radiation involved. I mean, yeah, you know, no death. Because on... dispo- disposing the body would be difficult. And I suppose for me, it's it feels like a really momentous moment because the clinical academic pathway is is not easy, and I mean, most people don't even know what a clinical academic. Is. I, I mean, to answer your question seriously, what does it feel like to be um, Mr. Gurley Micro connected with uh, the glorious Professor Gurley Micro? Well, it's, it's all right. <laughs> it's, you know, and the, the, the big thing was, was when you became a doctor and your consultants exams. This is it's just, a, just something else. I've become blasé at your, your achievements. 
See what I mean, people? There's no way my ego is getting any way too big in this household. <laughs> Although, if I go and stay with my father and we all have to wear matching T-shirts at that point, <laughs> I could become a monster. It could be true. Well, that would just be, that would be bloody hilarious. And it would just be interesting to see your, your uh, embarrassment at the, the whole thing and keep the ego in check. So, to become a professor, you have to tick a number of boxes. Now... It's not too clear to me even now, really, kind of what, how important different ones of those boxes are. Um, Every university has a slightly different way of judging it. Um, UCL have like a massive form that I frankly didn't have to fill in because I am not a UCL employee, although... Um, Going for honorary, you still have to fill in some forms and you still have to put in your CV and you're still judged against the same set of standards. Um, But because there's actually no finance linked to it, they do not pay me more or give me a different office or any of those things that my father asked me when he found out I was professor. It makes actually very little difference um, to UCL as a whole. And he has asked a lot. And he has asked a lot. Um, You have to be able to show things like research funding, um, research publications. But these days, and for something I'm really happy about, they also take into account things like um, outreach work, um, leadership. So one of the big challenges with career development in academia is, and I say this as somebody who's not like fully embedded, so um, forgive me if... My impressions are not correct, but there's quite a lot of studies out there saying that female academics tend to take on a lot of the pastoral care. They tend to take on a lot of the committee organising. They take on a lot of the outreach and EDI work. And that has previously not really been taken into account very much in terms of ticking boxes to get to places like Professor. So it's all been kind of how much money do you bring in, how many papers have you got out, how many PhD students you've supervised And it's quite hard to do both. Um, And I try to do a bit of both. Um, But it's frankly quite challenging. There's only so much new hours in the day. And so if you spend a lot of your time organising committees, you're probably not going to spend as much time writing papers. Or doing science. (laughs) And so that's meant that men have a slight advantage um, in some institutions about climbing up the academic career ladder. Um, because they're ticking those boxes that are well recognised. Now, even though the criteria have changed to include things that are less um, papers, grants, um, there's still, I think, on some committees where there are people there who were like, well, when I was a lad, um, what mattered was how many papers you had, not all of this running science outreach stuff. Um, I mean, when all this went now, but things. Yeah, um, There are still some challenges, I think, in terms of composition of some of those committees. And so it's also about really being really savvy about where you apply. So although UCL is one great big university, there are obviously lots of different schools within it. So I've got my professorship with the School of um, Civil and Geomatic Engineering she says you're looking at me like i'm i, would I know, know i know yeah, and i know this really well because it sits on my email signature and i've suddenly had a bit of a blank um and that's a very different school to for instance if i'd gone through the institute of child health for the record gentle readers i do not know <laughs> and no i have to tell you does he really care <laughs> i mean some of the words are in english but the order they're in um so what i'm saying is that For academic career progression, things are improving, but also you can't always change the system all at once. And part of it is about being savvy about how you work within that system so that you manage to tick the boxes that you need to tick in order to progress. And so don't be afraid of looking horizontally as well as vertically in terms of how to make things work for you. Anything else? Husband's just obviously completely overwhelmed with joy at the whole professorship thing. I'm distracted by ducks outside <laughs> our launch. Yeah, if you want to hear more about the ducks, though, you have to listen to the previous um, 
Girly Micro on Tour podcast where we do talk about the ducks that are kind of being quite entertaining and eating a lot. The quackening that is going on outside of our lodge. And so I just want to say, if I can make Professor, anyone out there aspiring to be Professor can make it. I am just a very normal person from a very normal background who has worked quite hard to tick a lot of boxes, but also make it easy on yourself by being a bit savvy about how and when you go for it. And you need to buy some more duck food. And I need to go and buy some more duck food. So on that delightful note, all opinions are our own.